Now that we know how to set up the null and alternative hypotheses, as well as find the expected frequencies and the degrees of freedom, the time has come to get on with it and actually run the hypothesis test. Now, notice that we're going to do this test with calculator or computer printout only. We are not going to be doing this test by hand, period. Never going to get, never going to do it that way. Um, let's look at step one for a second. Now, this is a pretty generic write-up of the null and alternative hypotheses. That's because every single problem like this is different, because every single problem has its own distribution, and the alternative hypothesis we've seen is kind of this generic, the proportions are not what you expect from the null, the distribution is not what you expect, blah, blah, blah. You know, So you kind of write up in words the alternative. And the null will have to have a distribution that you write up. You'll say the proportion of this you know, group is this, and the proportion for the next group is that, and so on. All right, then we say what alpha is, and then we calculate our expected counts and all of that stuff and find our test statistic. But we're going to get it from computer or calculator output. You are not going to find this by hand. The observed O is the observed value in each and the E is the expected value. And also you'll notice that the requirements portion of this test is actually a little bit lower than what you expect. Usually you see the requirements kind of up here at the top, but in this particular test, they come here. Basically all your expected counts must be greater than or equal to one. So you can't have any expected count that's less than one. And no more than 20% of the expected counts are less than five that gets to um, the distribution shape. Um, if the requirements are not satisfied, one option is to combine some. That's that's where you get the other category. If you remember, and they go back here to the Ron Paul and Mitt Romney example, you can see that what would have happened with the other candidates, because there were other candidates, but they were so small that we just kind of lumped them together into one group and made it 0.11. That's what they're saying right there. They're saying, look, if you've got a bunch of small categories, lump them together, call them other, and move on from there. All right, then you run your classical approach or your p-value approach. And again, you're using your calculator to kind of help yourself with this. So most of the time, I want to imagine you're probably doing the p-value approach. But if you're not, then you can use the classical critical value. But you get it from your chi-score table. And then you're going to reject if your p-value is low or if your test statistic is past your chi-score um, alpha. In other words, your critical value. Now, if you'll notice, both of these are right-tailed tests because that's all you've got. There is no other option with a chi-score test. Chi-score test for goodness of fit will always be right-tailed no matter what, period, the end. That's it. All right, then we're going to, I'm going to show you here how to run it with the calculator, but for this test that we have right here. So this is the same personnel director problem that we just saw on the previous page. And we had the limited advanced potential and all of that stuff. And we went and found these values right here already. So we found 82, 50, 30, and so on. So I want to show you how to get this test run with the calculator. So let me grab the calculator. I'm going to go to stat. I'm going to go to edit, which is number one. I'm going to clear out my old columns here. I don't need any of this stuff. And then I'm going to type in my new columns. It doesn't really matter which one you put where, but I mean, I'll just kind of match the paper. So I'm going to put the observed in L1 and the expected in L2. So one second. All right, there are the observed. And actually, I want to show you a little trick. Remember how we found these expected values here by making the calculator, well, by doing this in our head or our calculator and finding 200 times 0.41 and 25 times 0.41 and so on. You can actually do that right here, 200 times 0 0.41, enter, 82. 0 0.25 times 200, 50. 0 0.15 times 200 and so on. There you go, and you get all of them that way. No trouble. So if you didn't find the expected values already, you could find them that way. All right, then you want to go to stat. You want to go to tests. And you might as well go up because it's close to the bottom. There it is, the chi-square goodness of fit, G-O-F test. That's the one you're looking for. Now, if you have an 84 with the newest operating system, that test is there. If you have a TI-83, you do not have this test. You do not have the option of using your calculator to do it because it isn't in your calculator. 
right? So you'll have to use something else called stack crunch, and I can show you that. But if you have an 84, use the, this letter D right here. And it's going to say, where are your observed values? Well, for me, those are in L1. Your expected values are in L2. Degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one. If you'll remember, there were five categories here. So my degrees of freedom is four. So I'm going to type four. Then I'm going to go down to calculate and press enter. And there you can see right there. I've got my chi-score statistic is right here, 2.025. My p-value is 0.7311. And if I go back and show you the computer output, hold on, i got to scroll past this. There it is, right there, see? 0.7311 and 2.025. Let's look at that again. Yep, 2.025. So this is from the calculator. That This part right here is from StatCrunch. Now, real quickly, let me show you how StatCrunch works, just so in case you have to use it, you know how. So StatCrunch is a website that you have available to you with the same you know, username and password as my math lab because it's owned and run by Pearson, the company that runs my math lab. So here's StatCrunch right here. I just typed StatCrunch.com. Oh, and I'm already signed in. Let me sign out just so you can see it. So you sign in with your username and password that you use for, oops, I just typed my password wrong, your username and password that you have for um, my math lab. Then you go to open stat crunch. And then let's see stats, goodness of fit, see it right there? And you're doing a chi-score test, that's what you're running. A normality test is not something we do in this course. So you click chi-score test. Oh, and we'll have to go type our observed, so let me cancel this. I have to type my observed in here, so observed, and I'll do expected over here, expected. All right, so let me type those numbers in. It's really easy, I mean, you just type them the same way you did before. Oops, 30, 25, 15. And then expected would be, uh, let's see, 82, 50, Sorry, I can't remember the numbers. Uh, 30, 20, and 18. So 30, 20, 18. Stats, goodness of fit, chi-score test. My observed is in the observed column. My expected is in my expected column. Let's see what we got here. I don't need any of this stuff. Again, display expected, that's fine. But the rest of the stuff I don't really care. Now let me click compute and see what happens. And there we have it. See, 0.7311 and 2.025 right there. Same output that I put into the problem right here. Okay. So if you're stuck having to do a chi-square test on your own, that's how to do it with either your calculator or with StatCrunch. And again, StatCrunch is free to you because you have MyMathLab access. Otherwise, you'll need an 84 calculator. 83s do not have this test as an option. All right, step two, everybody's favorite step, that's alpha. So alpha is the probability of making a type one error, which is 0 0.01. It's given right here in the problem, right there. There's your level of significance. Okay, so that's where that comes from. All right, now step, step three, I'm running into trouble here. Step three. All right, I typed up a little bit, so let's see here. So when I look at the test, the chi-score statistic is step three right here. But remember, it says to get it from your computer or calculator output. You don't actually have to run this, so all you need is to know what it is. And it's 2.0 something or others, 2.025. It's given to you right here or on the calculator right there at the top, chi-square. See, it even draws a nice little chi. So that's your chi-square. So chi zero squared is 2.025 more or less so i should put an approximation there because it's not exactly that all right so that's good all right now we need to draw a picture for step four so let me go back real quick remember these are always right tailed always and with k minus one degrees of freedom so if you look let me pull up the table for just a second Okay, here's the chi-square distribution table right here. And if you recall, our degrees of freedom is the number of categories minus one, which is four. So when you look at this table, remember there's that kind of line down the center. 
2.0025 is closer to these numbers on the left than it is to these numbers on the right. That means 2.025 is over on the left hand side. And I can prove it to you. I'm going to teach you something that I haven't shown you before, but it's always been here, but the calculator doesn't always do a great job of graphing this, so bear with me here. If I press stat and I go to tests and I use letter D, the chi-square goodness of fit test, right here, and I'm going to grab that. I'm going to go down to the bottom, but instead of clicking on calculate, I'm going to click on the right to draw it. So I'm going to press enter. It'll draw the picture of what we should be looking at. See? There's the chi-square distribution, and there's the terrible, terrible bond time we have. So it's just a little bit past 2.0251, and you can see that the p-value is 0.7311 right there. So I'm going to draw a better picture that actually puts the labels where they need to go. So let me, let me draw that up one second. There we go. I've got a lovely picture drawn up here. So you can see that the p-value is 0.7312, which is this large amount right here. It's got to be a huge amount because remember, the whole curve only makes one. It's a probability distribution. So if the whole curve only makes one and you have a p-value of 0.7312, you've got, or 7311, you've got a lot of that curve covered by that area, I should say. I had to stall right there. I couldn't remember what word I was trying to use. All right, this means we are going to not reject the null hypothesis because our p-value is not less than alpha. I mean, that doesn't change no matter what kind of hypothesis test we're doing. We always reject if our p-value is low. We want p-values low, the lower the better. Our p-value is very, very large, it's 73%. So we are not going to reject the null hypothesis. That means that there is not enough evidence to support the claim that the reasons workers leave their jobs is different than the given distribution from the bar graph or the null distribution. There's a lot of ways you could kind of write this up, but basically you're saying it's not what the personnel director is claiming. They're claiming that it's different than that proportion seen in that bar graph. And we're saying, well, we, it might be the case that it's different, but we don't have any evidence to support it. All right. We've done our first chi-square goodness of fit test. I'll see you back here for more lecture in the next video. And it looks like there we'll have another test to look at, but this time everything's been done for us in a computer program.